you know, your stage, we can talk about who you actually are. I mean, who are you guys actually? It's really complicated to find information or catch you on LinkedIn. Do we actually work at SAP? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes of course. <laughs> at least we were able to enter the building. That's already a good sign. I want to enter the building. Can't rot you. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to start? Yeah, of course I can start. So my name is Alexander Rother, and uh, originally I'm Area Product Owner for Rio Services in the Ever Platform. And uh, in the last two years, I've uh, extensively working, uh, been working on the three-tier extensibility model and Ever Cloud and how we set all this up, how are the guidelines, the tier two enablement guidelines. Maybe you've also seen the one or the other blog regarding that. And uh, so this is probably why also yesterday I got the invitation to be part here of this of the last keynote. Yes, it was. Uh, Boris. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There we go. And yeah, with that, Boris, you want to continue, okay. Andre? Yeah, my name is Andre Fischer. I'm working in the product management of the other platform. So, and there I'm working on on different topics, starting from steampunk over the upper press for programming model, and also partly. Good old SAP gateway is still there, so there are still some questions around that. So and then then I'm trying to do let's say uh, in tech ed and so on uh, educational stuff, uh, yeah, to, to get the people on board with about rub programming. Yes, and finally, Bo Gepard, Chief Product Owner of the other platform. I think I joined SAP 25 years ago, so it's quite a long time already. Most of the time in this area, so starting development support for ABAP. And perhaps some of you know me from the debugger during the ticket sessions and so on. That was one of the topics I was in as well. So troubleshooting ABAP, I think, was one of the key keynotes, uh, not keynotes, that was afterwards, uh, sessions I had during ticket. I think my first ticket was 2001 or something like that. Um, therefore, I've, uh, I will never beat Karl Kessler. That's, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> But I attended several of the ticket sessions and um, after several steps with other test cockpit as well and with other tools, um, now I am responsible um, for the new topics which we add to um, the other okay. platform. And now um, the nice thing in the other area is it's never, um, there's always innovation in this state like that. It's not that we only think about maintenance, about what we have already, but we have always new topics, be it, um, Think about HANA, when we use that and integrate how to access um, SAP HANA the best way using CDS uh, or the other managed database procedures. And we have always the, the pressure from our s hana colleagues that this shall be integrated nicely into ABAP so that 5,000 or 6,000 or whatsoever ABAP developers internally can use this easily. And the same of them is, of course, then essential for customers and partners as well. The next was then Fury tools, or Fury, Fury apps. We had several attempts, to be honest, to have a nice programming model um, for Fury Apps, again, which scales with the number of developers, not only for two or three developers, but really for the masses which we have in S4 and on partner side. And now I think with our cloud, with the Fury elements, with the web, with all the stuff which we provided during the last years, we now reach the, the, the level of convenience, which we more or less know from the classic ABAP as well. It was really easy to build applications with Synpros and all the convenience which we had. And yeah. uh, the task must be, it must be at least as easy as with the old world to build now Fiori apps and web-based applications. And we are, I think we're getting to this step by step. Well, we are always in the environment of business applications. It must be easy to extend the solutions. All the um, reuse service must be nicely integrated. Compliance for the, all the product standards shall be um, more or less part of that. It must be easy to support the applications. That's what we always have in mind when we provide a new um, development model. And therefore, it's um, I'm not at all scared. <laughs> um, it's um, really nice, and um, we know about the impact we have with ABAP. Plus, um, we always see that new innovations are coming um, from us to support the new business scenarios. The next thing, of course, will be then uh, Gen AI uh, to introduce that in the other <laughs> time. Sure. There should be always Gen AI at the end of the session. That's why I just put this in. Thank you for the next question. Oh, there is a unique test uh, tool uh, 
Du machst viel als Trust Leaving the Room. Aber du wusstest einfach nicht, Boss. <laughs> so, um, I think it's clear that we must add um, generative AI capabilities in ABAP development as well, as it's available in the other environments as well, so Java and so on. ABAP is a little bit special because not too much of the ABAP code is publicly available, so it, it's not easily, can it easily be used for training more or less, and that's why we have to invest here a little bit to reach the same level. And what we did already is to, under, to understand, okay, what are the main use cases? Where do we get the main um, benefit from generative AI? This was one of the use cases nominated that it should be easy to generate not only um, empty unit tests, but already by analyzing the code, okay, what could be an appropriate unit test already, plus the test data. That's a lot of effort as well. Um, therefore, that's exactly um, uh, what we do at the moment categorize the use case. Fortunately, we have a lot of ABAP developers nearby, more or less in the next building to understand what are the main use cases, and then uh, more or less provide the foundation and ABAP SDK to get to or to access more or less uh, generative AI capabilities, and then step-by-step step provide the use cases. Mm -hmm. Will take some more time, not available yet, but we are really busy to do that. And you can be sure that step-by-step step, ABAP developers will benefit from that as well. But it uh, would be really nice actually to have some kind of you know, uh, add on or something where I can actually say this is my code base, or train it on my code base, because if you only take it on the public code base that is on GitHub, it is basically up up to, to Excel and up up Git. That I can actually That's exactly the, the absolutely uh, right. So um, if you would train today um, with the existing um, ABAP code, which you find publicly, then most likely that's not the most modern ABAP code. Um, it's at least not ABAP cloud code. Let's no, say like we, we would get wonderful reports. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's so essential to train it with modern um, ABAP code, with ABAP cloud code. Unfortunately, we have some at SAP, therefore we can use it for training here internally. Um, but that's exactly what we need currently to build up a foundation um, of a model or a prompting or whatsoever, which then really brings a benefit to developers, not generating reports, but generating modern code. And um, if we have that, and if we achieve that, then we can provide the first use cases. So it's a really a step-by-step -step approach. But um, uh, we are working on that. Um, it's absolutely one of our top priorities for next year. Oh, next, next year. Yeah. Right. <laughs> January. I explained it's one of our priorities for next year. That means we work on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's never of intent, not a promise. <laughs> yeah, but it would be really nice to see, see actually like a AI that's been trained at the subsystems at the customer. So you have your own uh, sub code base, so you can train it there, then we bring it over to the customer. Then it obviously is going to commit suicide. <laughs> it's going to tell no, this is not the code base that actually want to be trained on. <laughs> I think the um, next step is um, more or less train models or use prompting for the different use cases. understand which technique is the best for the different use cases. It's really um, some kind of evaluation which is still um, beh happening behind the scenes. And that's really essential because it will not really help if code is then generated, which is not suitable. And uh, it's we must reach a certain kind of quality which is generated, otherwise it will not pay off. And that's why we invest some time. And then if you have the use case, then step by step, we provide them most likely at first internally, because we have all these ABAP developers here internally, then we already see how good um, this works. And then we can provide externally as well. I mean, uh, everything is actually helping developers, and customers in the end to be more productive. Exactly. It's highly welcome. Because sometimes it's a must topic to be uh, very clear. Nobody actually wants to really write a unit test if there's a tool that helps. Yeah. Yes. Nobody really wants to do all the time the same iterative tasks about finding out how to set up a table. If there's a KI or AI that actually helps me to get this basic stuff behind me easily yep. in, in seconds instead of hours, perfect. Perhaps you have seen the TechEd keynote that uh, there was already a lab review to, for generating the skeleton of a web-based application. Um, most likely not the most common use case, which you use each and every day as an ABAP developer, but at least it helps um, if you have no idea about web and all the new ABAP, it at least helps you to get into that, that you don't start from scratch, but the skeleton is already generated 
and then you more or less use natural language to provide the use case you want to implement. And then at least the skeleton is already generated. Okay. Um, but to be very clear, a more scaling use case would be, would be of course, generating unit tests, more, much more effective and to which uh, reduce the amount of uh, effort uh, considerably uh, with that use case. Or explaining ABAP code, you know that much more uh, ABAP code <laughs> is read and not written. Yes. <laughs> so right. please explain me the code or find hours or whatsoever. These are use cases yeah. that really scale. Which really yeah. scale. It reminds me of the session titles of uh, Dominic. Which idiot wrote this code? Oh, damn, it was me. <laughs> I a famous comment line when I, when I wrote this line of code, actually, God and me only knows what it's actually doing. Now only God knows what it's doing. And in future, maybe we can also write in there and some AI that is going to analyze it. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. Yeah, so for sure, the developer efficiency scenarios, these are the ones that we, of course, will tackle in the platform. And this is what we are working on. Yeah. Yeah. Will this also be available on premise? <laughs> <laughs> um, to, very, to be very clear, I think the delivery channel of all that is really important. Um, at least I think that it doesn't make sense to only provide that capability in the newest release, let's say it like that, um, because then um, uh, it's really hard to reach the majority of the developers. Therefore, that's one of the discussions which we have. How do we provide then this capability? Um, with the goal that um, most of the ABAP developers then can actually use it, but not decided yet how we will do it. Good. All right. This is the famous disclaimer in, in, in other form. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to work on it. It will be created, but no commitment. We don't know how and when, uh, but <laughs> that's why we have this public vote map. <laughs> They normally help to get uh, a clear understanding what we plan to do. There was, there was some years ago, there was a public roadmap where uh, Marcel wrote there will be some uh, downfall or some migration from Bob to Rub. Uh, <laughs> and and the migration migration is still, is still not off. off. And, it's, and it's there now. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, one click yeah. migration. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's nothing with one click, right? So it's, it's from a Bob PO to a PO, So this is not one click. Um, but uh, there will be support for things like that. Okay. There is but it's an AI scenario. <laughs> because their logic is almost identical to syntax, not a... yes, In general, I think that um, generative AI can help a lot to migrate code from, let's say, ECC to S4 to ABAP Cloud or whatsoever. So I think we, we can't even estimate how big the um, impact will be of that. Yeah, there was somewhere in the chat was the question, uh, when will SAP make their own uh, S4HANA coding uh, ABAP cloud ready? <laughs> so first of all, um, there are different facets of ABAP cloud. The one is that you use the web. Um, if SAP colleagues internally in S4HANA build new applications, that's the default what they use yeah. to build few applications. Of course, if you are SAP <laughs> internally, there's no need to use the public APIs because you are in the stack. Yeah. yeah, but uh, there, there's a lot of coding that is older than some of the people yes, in the yes. audience. Well, yeah. <laughs> of course, we start with the ABAP Cloud technologies, right? So this is what we really do with, with REP, with CDS, yeah. with Fiori, and so on. All that, of course, we also uh, use new ABAP syntax when you write new code. So the ABAP Cloud technologies that Boris also showed in the presentation, of course, they are definitely used for all modern ABAP development inside SAP. And then in the end, switching the language version towards ABAP Cloud, this is then something different. And there, of course, uh, uh, we will check where this makes sense and where it does not make sense. Of course, if you want to talk about decoupling of applications and so on, it might it might make sense to have that. Um, uh, but this is not the first thing we do. The first thing we do is te technologically adapt to the new standards. But the question is good. Um, absolutely. Um, um, but. You must this, uh, more or less ensure that you distinguish between the actual application development <laughs> and the extensions. There was a question about uh, Python BTP, but should be uh, also be possible. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's somewhere over there, but it's not that big, uh, uh, for, uh, not that partly promoted by AP. Uh, so, it's a 
Yeah. It was a meet speakers. <laughs> Thank you very much. The other speakers are sitting there. Yeah. <laughs>